National Commission for Women launched the fourth phase of Digital Shakti campaign, a pan-India project on digitally empowering and skilling women and girls in cyberspace. The program is being run in collaboration with Cyber Peace Foundation and Meta. Digital Shakti was started in June 2018 to help women across the nation to raise the awareness level on the digital front, to build resilience and fight cybercrime in the most effective ways. Through this project, over 3 lakh women across India have been made aware of cyber safety tips and tricks, reporting and redressal mechanisms, data privacy and usage of technology for their benefit. In conversation with PBNS, Pavan Duggal, an advocate at the Supreme Court of India, who is also one of the top 10 cyber lawyers around the world, tells us what is the situation of cyber laws when it comes to the protection of women against cybercrime in India. Sir, you were just speaking at the launch of Digital Shakti 4.0. My first question to you is, sir, do you think India is aptly ready to fight cyber security crime when it comes to safety of women? I don't think India as a nation is yet ready to fight the menace of uh, growing cyber crimes and cyber security threats against women per se. And the reason for this is that uh, we don't have the adequate legal frameworks in India that, we, that are required for the nation to be successful. The reason also is the fact that India today does not have any dedicated law on cyber security. Uh, some elements of cyber crimes against women are covered under the Indian Information Technology Act 2000. But I think given the huge uh, gamut of new cyber crimes that are being targeted against women, the time has come that the law now needs to be more amended and more topical uh, made in today's context. We have to realize that India, like other nations, with the coming of COVID-19, has already now come in and has now beginning to start seeing the golden age of cybercrime. And this golden age of cybercrime is going to be with us for the next many, many decades. Hence, the quicker we come up with very sound legal foundations and legal frameworks to fight the growing menace of cyber crimes and cyber security breaches against women, the better it will be. But apart from law, you'll also have to go ahead and effectively enforce the existing provisions of law. And more significantly, you'll have to create more capacity building and more awareness in this particular regard. Yes, sir. Taking, uh, taking a key from your answer, Educating and empowering uh, fall on the same panel if you think about it. It is even more important to empower women than to educate, also to educate them. Then how can the law imbibe something that can educate women about the cyber crimes that they face? I think law can definitely start mandating a couple of things. For example, I've been saying for the last many years that the time has come that we must start inculcating cyber law education and cyber security education as a part of school curriculum from the first standard onwards. Because now everybody is having access to the devices. So the quicker we start inculcating these elements amongst children, uh, whether it's girl students, whether it's boy students, and start telling them about the intrinsic dangers of cyberspace, these huge kind of pedophiles that are existing there, the better it's going to be in terms of empowering them, in terms of making them more able so, as so that they can actually deal with these particular challenges. But the capacity building will have to be an ongoing phenomenon. You can't do one program and say, I'm done. We are a country of 1.3 billion. We will have to do immense amount of capacity building and both state and non-state actors will have to join hands in empowering the digital population of India. In this context, how, how, what are your views on Digital Shakti campaign that is being ongoing in India? The Digital Shakti campaign is a classical example of an innovative thought process that's been done by the National Commission of Women because through this process and now with its fourth reiteration as Digital Shakti 4.0, you are trying to reach out to more and more girl students, uh, the, the women power of the country and sensitize them about the intrinsic problems that are waiting for them when they are jumping onto social media and other internet bandwagons. I think these are basic cyber hygiene methodologies which are being sought to be sensitized to women so that they can imbibe them as part of their day-to-day -day lives and more significantly, they can make themselves more secure, more safe and if women are secure, I can tell you, the nation is in secure direction and is in secure hands. Definitely, sir. Wrapping up the, the, this discussion, there's one last question. As an advocate, uh, how would you suggest there are different uh, categories of crimes? There's extortion, there's cyber trafficking, and then there's financial fraud, which goes on digitally. Rekha Mimjad said that women at her age also, they fall into the uh, trap of financial fraud. How will the law imbibe these things that particular sections in particular crimes women will be protected on so, uh, social media platforms? So, a couple of things. The Indian Information Technology Act 2000 needs to be made amended. 
so as to make uh, coverage of specific women centric cyber crimes and women centric uh, uh, cyber security breaches number 2 we need to provide more effective ability for women to report anonymously the government has already now initiated the cybercrime.gov.in reporting portal where you can actually report anonymously but more significantly we still have to fight the mindset the woman who today becomes a victim of a cyber crime in india still believes that she will face harassment at the hands of society the law enforcement when she reports she has to be given that encouragement and the confidence that even when you report uh, you will be completely anonymous and you don't have to face any kinds of legal consequences but more significantly more capacity building will have to be done of the law enforcement agencies of the judiciary so that they can be sensitized to these huge challenges that women face when they become victims of cyber crimes and ultimately we all have to really make the indian ecosystem more cyber secure more cyber resilient and ultimately the more we empower the women uh, the more we empower the digital citizens of the country the better it will be in terms of enabling india to become an it superpower in the coming times thank you for watching stay tuned with pbns for more updates